Namaste and welcome to another episode of the Festival of Bharat by Jitni Media. Jitni Media is a digital media network which seeks to pervade dharmic and indic perspectives with clarity, finesse and civility. Jitni is Sanskrit for wisdom or intellect and has other associated meanings besides. We cover a wide variety of issues with courage and conviction. whether it's the revival and reclamation of a beautiful civilization current affairs history geopolitics lgbtq issues science and technology two civilizational conflict and forced conversions i'm delighted to have with me today uh, yet another distinguished guest uh, jain kalavar ji uh, who is the author of a book Uh, an outsider deconstructing European Enlightenment: Death in Three Acts. From an outsider's perspective, European Enlightenment was a brilliant materialist social in- innovation, which emerged in the 17th century as a response to hundreds of years of brutally de- destructive inter-religious wars in Europe. It led to the formation of national governments, financial markets, and rapid growth of a certain kind of science and technology. However, by the 21st century, that innovation, through its runaway success, has had unintended global consequences of ecocide, fratricide, and suicide, particularly impacting majority of the human population who are outside of the European sphere. Using the framework of his Devi traditions based on the Veda, Jain Kalavar ji offers a compass of hope. to navigate out of the global dystopian scenario created by the european enlightenment and towards individual and social awareness leading to harmonious ways of living as articulated in the sarve bhavantu sukhinah shanti mantra of the veda after a successful corporate management consulting career uh, spanning 35 years in the usa jain ji has been in the last 10 years providing guidance and mentoring to uh, individuals seeking to consciously navigate the dystopian modern theater while developing and deepening their compassionate intuitive and spiritual capacities by applying modal- modalities from the indic traditions particularly sri vidya he holds a btech degree in um, engineering from the indian institute of technology kanpur and an mba from the university of california berkeley Please join me in welcoming Jainji. Jainji, so very happy to have you with us today. Same here. Thank you so much for having me. Jainji, you're based out of Princeton, New Jersey. Am I right? In the US? Um, uh, that's right. Uh, just about a few miles outside Princeton Junction, New Jersey. Yes. Do you, do you teach in Princeton? Uh, um, uh, no, no. Uh, uh, no. We are basically. Um, I've used this as a base for my management consulting practice. Right. Uh, as well as now my guidance practice right right and uh, how are things there how are things in new jersey in princeton and uh, i mean with respect to covid especially uh, i hope you're all doing well the family uh, uh, yeah yeah we are all doing well uh, the last uh, couple of years have been uh, very interesting um, mm-hmm. uh, you know it's been it's been waves of uh, unexpected events uh, coming through uh, and when when one looks at it uh, from a, a different perspective uh, it's it's not so unexpected either but but um, i i think i think um, uh, many of us uh, have gone through ups and downs and i i must say me and my family um, have uh, navigated it quite well in the process yeah right good to hear that i think pretty much uh, the story across the globe i think everybody is trying to do their best to navigate out of this crazy mad situation that we've somehow found ourselves in <laughs> so um janji without further ado let me just start with um my very first question uh which is to do with your book um you know recently a lot has been said of the need to decolonize our minds of these mm-hmm. ideas and tropes that have been pushed into our psyche thanks to years of colonial rule um and one of the unshakable notions that um, generations of indians have uh, imbibed without question is the superiority of the western mind and uh, the idea that science and rationality are somehow the products of european enlightenment now you've written a book on this 
So could you help clear some of the misconceptions that um, are associated with this trope? What is the truth behind European enlightenment? Okay, so uh, so um, this uh, you you did say to me um, that you were going to ask me tough questions, and this this is a fairly complex question, Pujita ji. Okay. So uh, let me try to address it by um, uh, untangling myself out of this question and, and see what comes out of it. Okay, so uh, um, I, I heard rationality and science. Right. So I, I want to first speak about that before talking about European enlightenment itself. Uh, in our conversation, I'm sure it will keep coming back up. OK, so if you look at rationality, what is rationality? Right? And what does it mean to be human? So uh, humans have this uh, ability uh, to uh, observe phenomena. Right. And by observing phenomena, uh, we, we develop patterns. Right. Right? Our sense functions observe phenomena, our buddhi, right? Uh, so uh, just look at it. Uh, our, uh, between our karmendriyas and uh, jitendriyas, we, we uh, observe phenomena and the buddhi uh, starts observing patterns out of it. The patterns, right, uh, then make meaningful uh, outcomes, meaningful um, uh, ways of thinking about it and we behave based on that. That is rationality, right? If, if I look outside and I see dark clouds gathering, right? And so that's a phenomena, right? And, and my buddhi tells me, oh, it might rain, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, if, if it's going to rain, I'm going to take an umbrella and go out. Yeah, now that is rational behavior. Correct. You know what I mean? Nowhere in this rational behavior did I have to wait for European enlightenment to tell me, look <laughs> up to the sky, right? See if the dark clouds are gathering. Yeah. True. Yeah. So, so rationality is ingrained. It, it, it's the way uh, individual humans are rational because they have the capacity, we have the capacity, right? Uh, to observe phenomena. Uh, and come up with the patterns. We observe phenomena, come up with patterns, come up with conclusions and based on behavior on that. That's at the individual level. Now let's to look up science. Yeah. So uh, when it comes to science, uh, let us let me take another illustrative example. India has long coastlines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and for many, many millennia, uh, uh, our people, our communities have been fisher folk. Mm. Yeah, and they have been very successful fisher folk for a long time. How did they do that? Mm. It's a complex environment they have to work through, mm. right? So um, how did they do that? Uh, they had to figure out wh when the tides were going to come in, right? Uh, and how the tides change by the full moon and the new moon. They had right. to figure out uh, how those tides change uh, during um, seasons and mm -hmm. across seasons. Right. So uh, the first part, uh, they were able to get data by observing uh, the movement of the sun, moon uh, and the planets and through the Panchangam were able to predict very accurately when the tides would come in and when they would ebb away. Right. Okay. So that's the Panchangam. Right. Mm -hmm. The fisher folk, when they went out there fishing, they also noticed something else. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Panchangam, by the way, also gives you the seasons, etc. Mm -hmm. It tells you exactly uh, when the seasons will come, uh, come through and so forth. When the fisher folk went out there, they started observing things about uh, how the fish behave. Mm -hmm. uh, when it would be a good time uh, to mm -hmm. fish and when uh, it would be uh, when they noticed when the fish was spawning, um, uh, they should not fish at that time so that they uh, get a blessing of a boon uh, of a better harvest later on. Mm -hmm. And these were incorporated, these observations are indeed incorporated into their folk songs. Uh, if, you, if you go and uh, do a study of that, you, you'll notice that people actually uh, transfer knowledge through their folk songs uh, mm -hmm. on the behavior of the fish in the seas mm -hmm. and, and how it is connected to the seasons Right? and uh, ability to predict the seasons and the tides. See mm. how complex a model they worked in, mm. right? Through observation, 
that to me is science. That is democratic science, the democratic science of the people. So they lived rationally and scientifically, didn't, didn't wait for someone to come and tell them how to do it. Right? Now that is democratic science of the people, for the people, by the people. Now comes Western academia, Western science through European enlightenment. They say, oh, you can't do science. Mm -hmm. We will do science. Okay. So they over the process of observation, which is so natural for humans, individuals, and communities to do and to build their models and to work at it. Mm. And they called it science with a capital S. Correct. Right? That's, so basically, they, they took it over and, and they claimed that only they could tell others mm. okay, um, uh, how to behave in this world, how to sense this world, how to come to conclusions. Right? And we can talk more about it, but that's that's basically uh, what European Enlightenment did uh, as far as uh, taking away our agency. Mm. The process of colonization goes so deep. It takes away our agency to understand and sense the world. First of all, to sense the world, right? And to understand it and to build it for ourselves. Mm. That is why we in India have become mimickers. We mimic. Even now, we mimic whatever the West does. Why? Because right. there is an implicit suggestion that's embedded in us that we can't do it ourselves. Yeah. We have to wait for academia to tell us what yeah. to do. Right? Um, would, you, would it be possible to uh, discuss perhaps the historical underpinnings of the European Enlightenment, how it came about? And, you know, like I said earlier, uh, uh, we've been told a certain story about the Enlightenment and what what's the truth? Right. So um, um, there, there were um, uh, first of all, out of Christianity came the Holy uh, Roman Church and uh, and the Holy, Holy Roman Empire. The Roman mm -hmm. Empire broke into two, right? Uh, the the Western uh, end of the Holy Roman Empire, right? Uh, and then the uh, Byzantine end of it, the Orthodox Church. The Holy Roman Empire uh, uh, st uh, started um, not only converting everyone mm -hmm. uh, from approximately uh, 380 uh, through to uh, 1500 or so. Lithu Lithuania, for example, was one of the last ones to go. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so were the Slavs. Um, uh, but the English uh, perhaps were uh, one of the earlier ones. Um, uh, so. Um, as the Holy Roman Empire um, tried to rule through all the kings over a thousand years, it became increasingly uh, impossible for them uh, uh, to, um, to convince the people uh, 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 that, that whatever the Pope said was infallible. Mm. Okay? It caused dissensions. It caused, uh, especially the Protestant uh, uh, dissension that came about, uh, it, that, that, started, uh, that caused uh, uh, intra-religious wars. Mm -hmm. okay? They still called themselves Christians, mm -hmm. right? Uh, 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 but uh, uh, there were a, a lot of cell, uh, sects that were formed, and Correct. they started fighting with each other. And they were really- The Church of England and, yes. Right, the Lutheran Church, the Calvin, Calvinists, um, there, there were extremely brutal wars uh, uh, against uh, uh, the Pope uh, mm -hmm. and the Holy Roman Church. Um, uh, 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 approximately 30% of the population was killed um, um, uh, as, as a result of this uh, between the, uh, approximately the 1300s and um, uh, the 1500s. Uh, uh, and um, uh, part of it uh, washed into England as a civil war. Um, and one of the things that happened during the Civil War uh, is Prince Charles um, um, and his close advisors uh, had to exile themselves into uh, Paris. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and there they met up with the French intellectuals too. And Hobbes came up with this idea uh, mm -hmm. uh, that the way to get out of this mm -hmm. situation that Europe was in uh, is uh, uh, to uh, come up with this idea of social contracts and that, uh, that, that we no longer um, uh, require uh, something called a God, uh, mm -hmm. though fine, there is a God and that is fine, 
but as far as uh, the affairs of people are concerned, right, mm -hmm. uh, we can do it separately. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so so he came up with this idea uh, of uh, um, uh, social contracts where, where people uh, uh, could interact with each other. Um, nature was considered completely inert, um, and uh, it, it all depended on um, uh, uh, what uh, uh, people agreed to do and not to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, uh, at at that point in time. Uh, since nature was inert, right? The question came up: Who would decide how to interact with nature? Mm -hmm. Okay, that became a, a, a big question in itself. Uh, I, one of the things they found uh, th that anarchy, the, the the situation of anarchy that was prevailing or, or for almost two hundred years, uh, where where people were simply not accepting any authority, uh, was creating a lot of problems about. <clears throat> everyone going about their own ways mm -hmm. okay that's where uh, the idea of knowledge production being centralized started coming about mm -hmm. okay how do we interact with nature so we have agreed uh, uh, that that we will interact with amongst ourselves and and an elite group will decide uh, how we are going to interact with ourselves right but still mm -hmm. how do we interact with nature has not been resolved Right. So, so, so the, 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 the second step then was formation of the Royal Academy of Sciences in 1661, formally, which said yes. from now on, from now on, all science will be done through the Royal Academy of Sciences. That brings me to the next question, Jainji, which is about that, uh, which is the uh, Royal Academy of Sciences is formed. And then, of course, there is a kind of a systemic mechanism of controlling knowledge in Europe, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 uh, and then, of course, there's a peer review system and all of that, and you have spoken of it also in your other talks. Mm -hmm. So could you talk a little bit about that? Because I think it affects uh, all of us, and I think particularly people who are uh, connected with the world of science. Right. So, uh, so, um, uh, so uh, this, this question uh, about uh, how, how do we um, interact with nature figure out how nature works. Now that we have said it's inert, uh, uh, there's nothing mysterious about it. We have to figure out how it works and how, how we are going to control it uh, and manage it and exploit it. Um, uh, and uh, that's where uh, Boyle comes in uh, and Boyle's law that you know of, uh, 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 the pressure and volume interaction. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, he, he, he decided to conduct Okay, uh, uh, he was one of the um, feudal lords. This is um, Boyle, uh, and, and a graduate, a graduate of Eton. He was much okay. younger than Hobbes. Is and, it and Boyle, Boyle Genji, Boyle Charles Boyle? Yeah, yeah. Okay. of the Boyle's law. Boyle's law. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Bo yeah. Uh, oh, 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 I, I forget. Uh, PB equals RT. Uh, it's temperature dependent. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the temperature dependent relationship. Uh, how that works. Um, um, so um, he conducted experiments uh, in his palace, shall we say, uh, in, uh, in his castle or whatever. Um, uh, and Hobbes opposed it and said, uh, if you start doing it, everyone else will start doing it. Okay, and the compromise was reached to, through the king of uh, creating this uh, uh, Royal Academy of Sciences. Mm -hmm. And he said, but how do we know uh, that this is correct? Mm -hmm. What you're saying is correct, etc." So uh, he appointed, uh, the king appointed uh, with counsel from Hobbes, uh, 12 peers, okay? So the, uh, just, uh, just as uh, a boil um, uh, was, was a feudal lord, um, not quote unquote a scientist from somewhere uh, mm -hmm. as such, um, uh, the 12 peers were also peers actually, literally uh, his peers who were noble lords, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they uh, went went to uh, his palatial laboratory and checked out what he was saying, and they stamped yes, yes, what he says is correct. That's, what was, that was the first first peer review that happened. But, uh, Genji, what was Hobbes' objection to Boyle doing the uh, experiments independently? What was the objection that he put forth? Um, so, uh, according to uh, Hobbes, uh, everything is already known. 
all we have to do is uh, uh, go to Pythagoras, uh, Archimedes, Aristotle. It's already there. We don't need to explore anything more. Whatever okay. they have said is done. It's done. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, geometry tells it all. Uh, it's it's all known. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because uh, uh, they they had gone through uh, such angst. He didn't want any new information to come out which would uh, impact uh, mm -hmm. or have even the slightest chance. Think about it. Um, it's basically humans have this tendency, if you step back, uh, what drives this? It drives it on all of us. Okay, And we will come back and, and see how it's impacting us also and mm -hmm. how we are acting. Mm -hmm. We uh, humans... Uh, have this tendency uh, to be risk averse, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we want to uh, uh, take uncertainty towards certainty, mm -hmm. right? So you can think of Hobbes uh, as a uh, as someone who is extremely risk averse, right? Mm -hmm. He was a tutor. He was a tutor to Prince Charles, and you know, a, a guide, a much older person. Uh, uh, he he was completely risk averse, and he said the the only way to uh, uh, ensure that there would be no more civil wars uh, about uh, these aspects of what is true and what is not true, etc., is to say we already know the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay, no need to explore. Right, just follow what uh, Archimedes said or Pythagoras said or Aristotle said. That's it. Right. Uh, uh, while um, uh, the younger Boyle was saying, "Hey, but look, we we can do this. This this can change things." Right, he was a tinkerer. So, yeah. uh, right. So, so uh, there were these younger people who say, uh, now, now that uh, we have been able to cut off uh, um, uh, our um, need for following the authority of the Pope, we we can try different things. So there is that aspect of exploring that humans also have. Mm. So, and how does the, the 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 of course the whole system of Having peers, which is which the even which you tell us anecdotally that it was, you know, these twelve peers or twelve lords who happened to be there when Charles Boyle conducted his experiments, and then subsequently this led. How did this lead to a systemic, uh, uh, you know, ecosystem which then took control of any kind of knowledge production, saying that we decide what is scientific and what is not, what holds and what does not hold. So the Royal Academy of Sciences, everything had to pass through the Royal Academy of Sciences. The funding, the chartering of any projects, okay? It's a combination of how uh, how the um, projects are, uh, any scientific exploration is funded, right? Mm. Uh, the printing press helped a lot, mm. right? Yeah. The printing press, by the way, was one of the key technologies uh, that helped the Protestants Mm -hmm. um, uh, inside the war also, right? As in pa pamphlets were printed? You mean pamphlets? Yeah, that's right. That's right. In, in fact, Gutenberg, uh, uh, an interesting story, I mentioned it somewhere. Um, uh, Gutenberg came up with this uh, uh, printing press uh, and uh, uh, it was very expensive. The only way uh, he could uh, uh, make, make a business case, quote unquote, for it was if he had volumes to print. Right. Okay. So the biggest thing that uh, volumes they could print was either the Bible or the Quran. So he, he went to the Holy Roman uh, Church, right? And and they wanted uh, to control who could read the Bible. Okay. Mm. They they wanted their priests, their, their padres, to read the Bible, not not everyone else, right? Okay. Um, uh, he went to the Ottoman Empire, Emperor, the Sultan. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and offered it to him. The Sultan was interested, but his scribes mm -hmm. went against it because uh, there was a whole profession who used to write beautifully, the Quran mm -hmm. beautifully. Right. And they said, oh, no, that's not allowed. Yes. Okay? So the printing press uh, uh, didn't have a market Okay, mm -hmm. uh, till um, Martin Luther yes. stepped in. Yes. Right? And, and he said, I can print it. I, I will print it. I don't care mm -hmm. Okay, whatever they do to me. Right. Yes. I'll print it. So that, that was uh, that was where it started. And the pamphlets. That was the way of uh, yeah, pamphlets and then, you know, spreading the word was. Uh, right. So, so once uh, once the printing press came about, whoever controlled the printing press also controlled the channels. Mm -hmm. So so there's the funding, there's the peer review, 
uh, and uh, the channel of dissemination uh, and through the printing press. Okay, so uh, the Royal Academy of Sciences said uh, 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 that not, not only uh, have uh, the um, experiments and scientific studies have to be uh, peer reviewed, the peers uh, have to be approved by the Royal Academy of Sciences uh, and the uh, 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 printing press. Mm. Okay, it has to be printed uh, under the logo of the Royal Academy of Sciences. Do you, do, do you see the ecosystem uh, still right. continuing right. exactly like that? Exactly like that. Exactly. Even today. Right? Absolutely. Right. So, uh, ba basically, uh, it's an imitation of the same thing over and over again. Right. So On it's, a it's a much larger scale. <laughs> it's, it's a feudal hierarchy. Right? It's the same feudal hierarchy. Uh, uh, who get, who gets into the academia is carefully mm. controlled. Controlled, right? Yeah. And who gets tenure? Uh, I, I don't know whether, whether you have actually seen a, 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 a tenure ceremony. It, it, it's you actually they actually uh, for the chair. You, you, when you say a chaired professor, right? Mm -hmm. You have heard of chaired professors. Yes, yes actually, they, 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 they it's like a throne. They so, put him up on the throne with the robes and yes, yes. Right? It, it, it's a funeral ceremony. I haven't seen the ceremony, but I do know that getting tenure is like the biggest uh, for every professor in academia, uh, any uh, academic. It's like uh, you know, it's like the the holy grail. <laughs> you know? Right. So yeah. so tenure is one thing, and then there's a chaired professorship. Mm. <laughs> when you say chaired professor, right? So the, that's that's the highest level highest one level. can reach. Yeah. True. Um, and that's where it, uh, this whole trope, it's their tropes, right? Right. So um, that's interesting, Genji. Um, so you, your book mentions, I mean, the title of your book is, um, uh, you know, about European enlightenment. And then you talk about death in three acts. And you mention specifically the consequences of European enlightenment being ecocide, um, fratricide and suicide, am I right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So, uh, and then this is connected to the idea of, uh, you know, that that in the Western civilization, essentially nature is inert. Uh, and that has led to the exploitation of nature in Europe. So how do you connect these three uh, deaths to the exploitation of nature in Europe? Perhaps you would want to reflect a little bit on that. Yeah, so, so, um... Um, uh, with, uh, uh, once Hobbes declared, um, I, I say Hobbes, but uh, uh, he was quote, quote unquote a spokesperson, shall we say, uh, uh, for that milieu, uh, uh, nature is inert, but he has made that explicit statement, uh, mm. which we can uh, uh, then quote. Mm. Um, uh, once that happened, and uh, once uh, the Royal Academy of Sciences was created, um, uh, uh, the, the funding went towards uh, how, how best uh, uh, they could come up with projects wh which would exploit um, uh, nature, right? Mm -hmm. Which would exploit nature and, and, uh, uh, um, uh, and specifically uh, because uh, uh, those who were funding were looking for returns, uh, the projects had to be tailored uh, in that direction. It, it, it went naturally in that direction. Mm -hmm. One of the first things that happened uh, was uh, uh, exploiting um, the mines for coal. Large amounts of coal mining started happening in Britain. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and along with uh, the uh, uh, coal mining uh, came the uh, question of, of uh, how to uh, uh, get the volumes out, uh, the large uh, amount of volumes out, and, and that's uh, that's where uh, we came up with. Um, rail lines uh, okay so initially uh, they were they were iron lines uh, which were laid out uh, and they were horse drawn they were not yet uh, steam engine horse drawn okay horse drawn yeah the steam engine came uh, uh, a couple of hundred years later but but, but um, uh, th that's where it started the exploitation uh, of nature and, and uh, denuding the landscape uh, uh, basically disrupting uh, uh, disrupting uh, the way uh, people live communities live Okay, because remember, uh, uh, this has now become a, a top-down knowledge production, mm -hmm. right, uh, uh, and implementation, right. So, so th that shift started happening. Okay, 
uh, as that sh shift started happening, uh, they were then able to apply it, right? Uh, as the steam engines came up, et cetera, uh, uh, to steam boats, uh, uh, to uh, uh, having a, a global uh, presence, mm. right? And, and through the global presence, everything went through, uh, uh, went to uh, uh, exploiting nature uh, for creating material wealth uh, for few people. And, that, and you have seen that happen all the time, right? right? Uh, 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 first it was coal, then it is oil, uh, and so forth. So that, that's, right? And, 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 that, and that's the uh, ecocide uh, we actually have observed, mm -hmm. right? Now, um, and, and all of that uh, is actually, the, this ecocide is reflected uh, in the, uh, the social contracts based um, um, society that we moved to. Uh, the, Christianity had this creator God, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and there was some sense that the creator God has created nature for us Correct. to enjoy, but mm -hmm. still we have to respect nature because it's God's creation, mm -hmm. right? So, so once that actor was removed, right? And who became God? The social contract became God. Mm -hmm. right? So also by social contract, you mean... What, what do you mean by the constitution? The constitution. The constitution, ah. the, the constitution is the social contract between the elites. Mm. The elites come come together. They call it the constituent assembly, mm. right? They put it together. That's the constitution. That becomes God. We consider constitution the God, right? Oh. So, <clears throat> yeah, everyone else then has to make their contracts mm. on that platform. Mm. That's how it works, doesn't it? Yes. Right? Is it constitutional? Is it, you yes. know, does, does it matter yeah, so, if it is ethical or it's, um, you know, um, anything else? So, but it so, is so, so I want to contrast that. I want to contrast that here with a, a what our Veda teaches us, right? What our Veda teaches us uh, 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 that, uh, that uh, to be harmonious, to lead harmonious life, lives, uh, we have to be in consonance with the Rita, the cosmic cycles, right? Now, how, how, how did we have these conversations? We had the conversations, let's say, through the Puranas, right? And our literature, where we brought the rivers, the mountains, the trees, the animals to life. Mm. And we had conversations with them. That's how we learned, in our minds, maybe. Do you understand? We gave them respect. And, and through that, we came to ways of interacting with them. We told stories to each other about this tree, this, right? This is the way this tree behaves. This is the pattern it behaves. This is how we can, we need to take care of it. This is the way this river behaves, right? We, we gave it life, right? When we create constitutions, right, at the top level, you look at any constitution, Mm -hmm. Right? There's no, uh, the rivers don't play a part in it. Mm -hmm. Do they? No, they don't. Um, and, and the constitution, um, uh, how it leaves out uh, all non human uh, actors. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, all the non human actors are left out. Only human actors, human actors. Uh, uh, right, uh, have roles in that constitution. Okay? Uh, uh, so in effect, uh, everyone is effaced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, and, and uh, whether you replace this constitution with that constitution, etc., it's basically new social contracts, right? Uh, and that's the difference we have to understand. Now, what happened was uh, when it uh, I'm going from eco side, which we already talked about, to fratricide. So what what is this fratricide? First of all, uh, someone who read my book um, wrote back to me and said. Why do you call it fratricide? The way you describe it, it's really genocide. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, my response was, look, I'm looking at it from the Devi's lens, the mother divine, right? From the mother divine's lens. We are all children. We are all, we are all her children. We are all brothers and sisters. Yeah. When we kill each other, to it her is. it's fratricide. Yeah. So, so, uh, so that, that's, that's, uh, that's what... Uh, Came, uh, I came up with. Now, uh, the people who were killed after the post-European enlightenment, mostly, okay, 
uh, whether it was through uh, famines or wars, uh, were the non-Europeans, yeah. right? Uh, um, for, for whatever reason, shall we say, they had not got the memo, mm -hmm. right? They had not got the memo <laughs> that, that, the, uh, that the Europeans had become modern, yeah. right? <laughs> that they were on the move and they were going to inflict their modernity on the globe. Correct. The rest of us did not get that memo. So, yeah. so, <laughs> so, so, so we, were, we, were, we were taken by surprise and they rolled in. They rolled in and they said, nothing is going to stop us. Mm -hmm. right? so, so, for example, um, uh, in, in India, uh, the East India Company moved very quickly. Two, two things happened. <clears throat> one and they uh, they converted large swaths of uh, Bengal, Bihar, and, and parts of UP to opium cultivation, mm. right down to Malwa. So um, uh, the opium cultivation uh, caused lots of famines, yes. famines, uh, and deaths uh, out of it caused disruption, right? Uh, and, and that's so that's that's to me that's part of fratricide. B besides all the wars and, um, and that they created along the way. <clears throat> Same thing later with cotton in Gujarat that created enormous funds. In indigo also, I think. Indigo. In indigo, exactly. The, the, for, for their textile mills again, right? So, so um, uh, that, that's, uh, that's where uh, the fratricide comes in. Okay. Uh, and the suicide part uh, comes later, uh, uh, starts coming in later in the 19th century when the moderns, uh, uh, having um, done what they did with nature, uh, and rest of the globe started looking at their own body, right? And saying, mm -hmm. oh, even our own body, it's mm -hmm. inert. We can do stuff with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so that, that, that's where uh, the, the uh, suicide comes in, uh, where uh, uh, even the moderns, their own agency uh, gets deprecated. Okay? So it's like um, and, and substance abuse and things of that nature. Substance abuse is one. Um, uh, Software, mm. okay, uh, the, the whole automation process and the software process, right? Um, uh, you, you have something else sensing for you. You have something else uh, thinking through for you when you talk of AI, etc. right? right. It's, uh, uh, you have, you, you are creating material matter, right? So, 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 so that um, humans are no longer um, required to play a role uh, in, in being creative and productive, mm -hmm. less and less so. And, and that's where the suicide comes in. And you, you start seeing that uh, in advanced countries uh, where the birth rates are falling. True. Right? When, when birth rates start falling, that is mass suicide. <laughs> the species, at the species level, mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's a process of mass suicide that has happened, started. That's mm -hmm. right. And, and uh, it, it, it's a natural, um, uh, it's a natural trend, okay, uh, uh, where, where uh, uh, when you start looking um, at humans being different, um, at that nihilism that comes in, uh, where uh, you have dissociated yourself from the cosmos, mm -hmm. you, you are unable to see um, uh, uh, how uh, your, your one pulsation, your one pulsation among infinite number of pulsations uh, mm -hmm. and, and to learn uh, how to interact and dance with it. That's what our traditions tell us, right? So, so, so it's a very different way of looking at the world. And once you start looking at the world that way, a whole host of things follow. Right, right. And I think this entire, um, the death in three acts that you have uh, so beautifully, you know, uh, talked about, um, uh, talked about, expounded on, is clearly linked to the very cornerstone of their belief that nature is inert and that we, that mankind is free to exploit nature. That, uh, you know, it is for, nature is there for us to enjoy or for us to, uh, for our gratification. So that is the cornerstone of the Western belief broadly, and one could say that. Um, and, and, and the humans themselves, then you, right. you know, humans, yeah, because humans themselves, right? So, so we can replace uh, this thing called humans also. 
yes. except for the few people who have power. Hmm. And increasingly, uh, you, you see that happen. And the, the dharmic way of living, the dharmic way of thinking uh, has always been in stark contrast to this kind of, uh, you know, thought process. Um, so, I mean, that brings me to the next question, Jainji, is uh, to do with uh, Hinduism, for example, for want of, I mean, everybody recognizes it as Hinduism, for want of a better word, let's go with the word Hinduism. Um, so, uh, Swami Chinmayanandaji had apparently said that um, the only way Hinduism can survive or the Dharmic Sanatan Dharma can survive is when we make practitioners out of Hindus. Mm -hmm. you corroborate on that a little bit because what does that really mean? And also maybe you could add a little bit about the kind of work that Chinmaya Mission is doing towards this end. So, uh, uh, you, you may know that uh, 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 Swami Chinman and, uh, was part of the uh, freedom movement uh, and uh, even uh, he was sent to jail in the uh, 1940s. Uh, and uh, that was the first time he, he was from Kerala, he knew English, he was a journalist, he was reporting, you know, the, and Kerala people tend to be a little to the left, etc. But he was in jail uh, and uh, someone gave him the Bhagavad Gita and Upanishads and started reading it, learning it, etc. Coming out of it, he said, oh, this is something different. Uh, and um, uh, unlike others, he headed to... Uh, uh, Rishikesh, the Shivanand Ashram, etc., and uh, 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 as even as the um, uh, independence was happening and uh, uh, um, the uh, the republic was being formed, um, so that uh, that's the uh, uh, that's the uh, journey he took, and, mm -hmm. and what he saw was coming out of it uh, uh, um, uh, was that uh, India was being ruled uh, by uh, these uh, English speaking people. Okay, children of Macaulay, um, mm -hmm. and uh, they they were alienated and distanced from mm -hmm. um, from the uh, Indian traditions. So he took it upon himself, and, and I, his uh, uh, particular contribution uh, was that uh, he would take the Upanishads, he would take uh, the Bhagavad Gita, um, uh, based on uh, Sri Adi Shankaracharya's Bhashyas. Okay. Right translate them into English uh, and uh, go about popularizing them, mm. okay? So, so that he could reach out uh, to these uh, English speaking uh, people of India who had taken the place of the British, right. okay? That, that, that was the most important thing uh, that needed to be done. Mm. So, uh, so when he talks about, um, um, so these are Hindus in name only, we mm -hmm. need to make them practitioners, okay? Uh, and given that um, uh, they have been uh, things have been put into their heads, they will ask all these questions, and the way to reach them uh, would be through the Jnana Marg, hmm. Vedant. So, hmm. so he took the Vedant to the streets, hmm. shall we say? Oh. Okay. So, uh, at that time, uh, 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 the people at Rishikesh, the Swamiji's, etc., opposed it. So that, that's not the way we do it. Uh, hmm. uh, a Vedanta is presented only to people who come to the ashram. It should not go out of the ashram. I mean, all those conversations, right. conversations were there. So, uh, in in nineteen early, very early nineteen fifties, he broke away from that. That's where. Oh. Okay. So, so that, I that, think that, he, he split from Shivananda ji, Shivananda uh, ashram, and then he started right. right, 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 uh, right. Uh, and, and so, um, yeah. So, so that, that that's uh, and. Uh, uh, to the second part of your question, um, 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 especially in the diaspora, English speaking diaspora of, of the US uh, and Australia and New Zealand and Canada and uh, Singapore and Hong Kong, um, uh, they find uh, uh, that's what that's one area where they play a very useful role uh, yes. uh, for giving access um, uh, to multiple generations now. Of people of Indian origin um, who have been distanced, uh, right? Uh, and uh, through uh, uh, discoursing in English, uh, English being the language uh, uh, that people are familiar with, and then bringing them into Sanskrit, etc. But first, being very open and saying, yes, we'll talk about it uh, in English. We'll discuss. We'll do right. study groups, uh, right? So that that that's that's been the key ongoing contribution there. Uh, speaking of splitting up. Uh, 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 one of the biggest spin-offs from Chinmay Mission 
uh, as you may know, is Arshavidya Gurukulam of uh, yes, Swami Dayanand. Swami Dayanand Ji, yes. Yeah. So, so uh, who was uh, uh, with Chinmay Mission for 15 years and uh, it's in the late 80s that he started. So, uh, so that's, um, that's the uh, uh, overall impact uh, and the continuing impact uh, that uh, Chinmay Mission has. And, and I think it particularly irks um, uh, those uh, uh, people uh, from India who are in Western academia, uh, because um, uh, here, here's someone who's reaching out uh, uh, in English mm -hmm. uh, about Vedan, right? Uh, 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 and um, is refusing to give up. So, the, so they become uh, one of the points of attack uh, for, uh, yeah, Sadhu. And interesting, you mentioned this, uh, Renji, because I mean, uh, I'm aware of the kind of work that, although not uh, not the full extent of it, but um, uh, one knows of the work that Chinna Mission is doing, especially abroad uh, in the USA and uh, Arshavidya Gurukul, for example, or the ISKCON or uh, Swami Yogananda's, um, you know, even his uh, his um, disciples. So there's a lot of work, but. In, ironically, it is the, hin mm. the, the Hindus, in, the, the, uh, the elite Hindu, so-called Hindu, Hindu elites in India, living in India, I think who need uh, more such instruction or probably would do well if they were to come under the influence of, uh, of course, Chinma Mission exists in India also. But I mm. think uh, it's kind of ironical that um, it's the people in India uh, the Hindus, the modern so-called progressive Hindus, who need more such, uh, you know, probably need need more such instruction than than the people living abroad, uh, because there are many. In fact, in, interestingly enough, there are many, many uh, even uh, people of um, uh, you know uh, Western countries uh, and around the world, in fact, who are taking to Hinduism mm -hmm. and Sanatan Dharma in a big way. So anyway, that was uh, off the tangent. Uh, that was a little tangential. So let, coming back to my next question mm -hmm. would be, um, it's a little specific. Um, could you, since we spoke about Chinmaya Mission and Chinmayananji, et cetera, and Vedanta, could you explain the importance of these three terms, Shravanam, Mananam, and Nididhyasanam? Uh, how are these the core principle, principles of the Vedantic approach to life? Uh, and of Hindu philosophy. I know this is a little, uh, you know, we're moving away a little from the general uh, uh, nature of what of this of this program. But I think since you are an expert on the Vedas and Vedanta, perhaps you would like to take this on. Um, okay. Uh, first of all, a qualifier. Um, I, I, I'm no way an expert on anything. In, in fact, being, being an expert. Uh, uh, maybe a disqualifier. So I, I would say I'm a practitioner. So right. uh, and, and I always say I'm a work in progress. Always, yeah. right? Um, and so uh, always open to learning. Um, uh, the the uh, and that, hence the shravanam mananam uh, nididhyasanam. So shravanam mananam uh, nididhyasanam uh, is uh, a, a a core approach in jnana yoga. Okay. So so. Uh, uh, so what is Shravanam? Shravanam is uh, listening or reading, uh, 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 observing the phenomena, shall we say, right? So, so um, uh, the, the senses observe the phenomena, right? Uh, and the mananam uh, is uh, the buddhi, right? Uh, the, the, uh, uh, once the karmendriyas and the jnanendriyas um, 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 deliver, uh, to uh, the buddhi, the buddhi does mananam, um, mm. and uh, then compares it with memory, etc., and, and says, "Okay, what does it mean?" And the nididhyas uh, is um, every day to say, "How am I going to incorporate it into my life? How how am I going to change my life because of that?" So, okay. would it be correct to say that shravanam is uh, mindful listening, uh, observation, perhaps also? Mm -hmm. And uh, mananam would be cogitation on that, as in deliberation on what you have perceived. And uh, nididhyasanam would be assimilation and an awareness of the assimilation of what one has. All right. So, so the, let me uh, take a few examples, okay, uh, of how this is done. Okay. So, so um, 
uh, and, and it will also give us the, the depth of wisdom uh, that has come about to us. Uh, let's take the uh, popular uh, verse, okay, karmanye vadhikaraste, ma faleshu kadachana. Okay, so uh, we have heard this now, right? This is Shravan. Shravan has been done, right? So, uh, karmanye vadhikaraste. So, we start breaking it down. Mm -hmm. Right. One of the things that Vedant teaches us, right? If you notice, uh, when you ask me a question, I started breaking it down. One of the <laughs> things that Vedant teaches us is to deconstruct. Mm -hmm. Go down, go down to each word. What, right? And be fearless about defining what you think that word is, right? Mm -hmm. And string together meanings. Show how it can be done. Mm -hmm. Right. That, that's what Vedant teaches you. Right. So karmanye mm vadhikaraste. -hmm. You have the right to action. You are qualified. You have the. You are an adhikari to that uh, act, mm -hmm. right? You are. Uh, you, you can act because the Devi has given you uh, uh, this shakti to act, right? You are qualified to act. However, right? Ma faleshu kadachana. So ma faleshu kadachana. What does that mean? Do not think of the fruit of your actions. Kadachana, yeah, Faleshu Kadachana, okay, it is it, the, uh, the outcomes are Kadachana, uncertain, and the sorry. outcomes are uncertain, oh, right, hey Arjun, while, while you have the qualities, the, you are qualified to act, always remember that the outcomes are uncertain, <laughs> right, so if you think of it that way, mm. right, that, that's where we are cogitating, shall we say. Mm. Do you know what I mean? The wisdom that is imparted, right? That cogitation starts happening. We were already aware, right, that we act in a probabilistic domain, not a predetermined domain. There is no determinism. The, the challenge that the West has is from what how they interpreted. The Greeks, mm. right? That there was something deterministic. There was loss of nature. Mm. The, the reason modernity has started collapsing over the last hundred years is right it, it is because of what they started observing as VUCA. VUCA, mm -hmm. and they will come to quantum physics perhaps. But mm -hmm. uh, the VUCA is volatility, uncertainty, complexity leading to ambiguity. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Very interesting. Right? Yeah. Oh goodness, things are volatile. Mm. Right? Things are uncertain. Beyond so our control. Mm. We, we, we can't structure them. Whole thing, the, the promise of modernity was we can structure things. Mm. The Hobbesian promise of the Leviathan was the social compact that we'll come up with, we'll we'll be able to fix it. Fix it. Structure it, mm -hmm. right? Right, right. So, so this yes. is beautiful because these three, uh, con these three things, uh, the, the the very approach, the the Sanatan approach to uh, knowledge acquisition, is pretty much individualistic. Actually, leaves it to the individual to find, to to understand, to use his own buddhi, his own chitta to understand, uh, you know, the information that he or she is receiving, as opposed to the commandments that were given exactly. out. Exactly, it, it gives agency. It gives agency, it gives agency. Right? exactly. Right, uh, and it says you can discuss it with people. You can discuss, right? exactly. Yeah, this is how I interpret it. What do you think? And let's come to an understanding, right? Exactly. And that, that's where it's very important to bring in because mm -hmm. we have got stuck somewhere, okay? Deshikal mm -hmm. Paristiti. Okay, when we observe something, it keeps changing, right? Just because, uh, something was said in some smriti 2500 years ago that was in that context that desh kal paristhiti right so so uh, with shravanam mananam nididhyasanam we can take it to the next step correct right so we can start asking oh it's uncertain can we do something about it though can mm. we do something about it mm. yeah we have the tantra right mm. if you go to verse 658 mm. in lalita sasana Mm -hmm. Right, she is described as Icha Shakti, Jnana Shakti, Kriya Shakti, Swarupini. Yes. So if, if you take that, 
uh, right? You have listened to it, right? Mm -hmm. Now you do mananam on that, right? Mm -hmm. And actually, by by daily chanting Laita Sahasranam, this starts coming out. She reaches out to you and says, you know what? You do a sankalpa. You do a kalpana imagination and you do a sankalpa, which is a commitment to that imagination. Mm -hmm. I will give you the jnan. I will bless you with the knowledge of how you can bring that about. Mm -hmm. And as you go deeper into that knowledge, I'll tell you what actions to take. Mm -hmm. Okay, by doing that, if you go to the previous one, if you go through this commitment, that tapasya, right, you may be able to improve upon the chances, the chances of being more successful with mm -hmm. the outcomes. Right. Okay, so you can combine the two now. You see the web that can be built. However, however, even with the improvement of the chances, right? you can still you can still end up with failures we all do yes we all do end up with failures right that's where the fork in the road comes mm. right one we can take the high road mm. or the low road okay that's also shown for the high road we go to the 15th chapter of the bhagavad gita vimukta sukha dukkha sanyai gachanti amudha Padam avyayam tata. Dvandvair mm -hmm. yeah. vimukta, sukha dukkha sannyek. Whether the outcome is there or not. Uh, yes. Right? Uh, whether you are unhappy or happy. Right? When you take both of these to be equal, right? Then you can actually go to the feet of that. <laughs> yeah? So th that's the high road. You take that, that's that's how you manage your failures because the failures are real. That's the nature of the world, mm -hmm. right? So what does this tell you? Th that it tells you how you can behave, how how you can manage your life, mm -hmm. right? It it takes you uh, uh, to to a way of looking at the world, uh, which gives you agency and say, look, this is an uncertain world. This is how you can manage this your. This is how you can navigate the way. Mm. Right. And, and it also uh, it also explains to you what the low road is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 this is quite a complex uh, two verses, uh, verses sixty-two and sixty-three, which are the ladder of fall in chapter two, mm -hmm. right? Which says, uh, 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 if you let yourself be frustrated because of your failures, it leads to anger, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that that anger leads to loss of intellect. Mm. That loss of intellect, that connection with the buddhi is lost. Anger cuts off connection with the buddhi. Then you behave like animals, carnivorous animals. And you see that happening, right? The nididhya, uh, the, the mananam is, oh yeah, when I get angry. I do, I right? do tend to act in a reactionary fashion. Yeah, I lose it, right? So, so uh, uh, do you see uh, how how this exercise of this three step process, right? It, it, it's not the high philosophy. It, it's actually daily practical use you yes. can make of. Exactly. Very pragmatic. Yes. Janji, the next question is to do with actually kind of related to since we're talking about uh, you know uh, Vedanta and so on. Um, this is interesting because I think I've heard you mention this uh, in one of your talks before, where you talk mm -hmm. about the story of the two birds, you know, the two birds from Mundagopanishad. And uh, it's a very interesting story and how it connects to quantum physics. You've made that connection. So could you please talk about that? Because I think that would be of uh, a lot of interest to our, uh, to our viewers. Okay. Um, yeah, so... Um... I, I did speak about um, uh, Mundaka Upanishad and the two birds, uh, which uh, um, uh, is, is a way uh, of uh, uh, explaining uh, why, uh, why why we notice uh, the sensorium as being real, um, uh, while Advaita Vedanta the Upanishads tell us um, uh, that it's all transient, so it's all pulsations. So uh, um, uh, when, when we take up Advaita Vedanta, uh, it becomes a little bit too ex uh, abstract. So 
uh, I used the thread coming out of Advait Vedanta in Kashmir Shaivism and Sri Vidya mm. uh, of spandana, of pulsations, um, mm. uh, uh, to to uh, uh, talk about uh, uh, what being human is. Uh, so, mm. um, so I'll first talk about that. Uh, then uh, I'll show how quantum physics uh, uh, tries to explain that uh, from the other end. Uh, and uh, why, uh, at least uh, from the perspective that I have, uh, that uh, that is inadequate and doesn't go far enough. Um, so, um, um, so there is Sakshi Bhava. Um, uh, the, the Sakshi Bhava is the observer, uh, the, 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 that capacity, that capability to observe. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and it's the Sakshi Bhava that enlivens the buddhi, the okay. the, uh, the the consciousness uh, that chitta. Uh, that, that the buddhi has is, is because uh, the observer gives it that uh, uh, ability, that pulsation, um, uh, and, and then comes the uh, come the jnanendriyas uh, uh, and then the karmendriyas. So, uh, so uh, the sense functions that we have, the five senses, right? Uh, 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 they interact with other pulsations. So, think of the think of it this way. Uh, here's the human pulsation which itself cons consists of uh, minor pulsations within that. And we are floating in an infinite ocean of pulsations. Okay, uh, if you can imagine that, and then say, uh, here's just this one little uh, pulsation called the human pulsation, and, and it's able to interact with other pulsations around it in a very narrow way mm -hmm. through its sense functions. So it, it captures uh, uh, the, uh, the fluttering, uh, uh, aspects of the pulsations around it, right? A and when it presents those uh, interactions, th that phenomena to the buddhi, right? Mm. It it's at that stage that it becomes static. Mm. Okay, so so all of a sudden, uh, 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 these things out there, which are actually just pul pul fluttering pulsations, okay, uh, they become form. They become roop. For the first time, they become roop. From spandana, mm -hmm. they become Take rupa. A rupa. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and then the buddhi starts giving it names. So mm -hmm. it becomes nama rupa. Nama rupa, right? correct. <laughs> uh, then so so uh, in the process of becoming nama rupa, then it creates memories and, and then it creates uh, frameworks and meanings around. Now the story of okay. the six blind men feeling different parts of the elephant and. Exactly. So <laughs> so so the meanings are created around it uh, and and then we start living in it we okay. start living in the nama roop uh, framework the the uh, meanings that we create out of it right so so where did we start it's all pulsations mm -hmm. it's all transient it's all changing all the time right and, and yet we see it as matter how mm -hmm. it's in our minds that we see it as matter so uh, uh, the uh, the upanishads uh, and the particular darshan of advaita Advait Vedanta, okay, um, has, as far as I know, I, I have seen, okay, uh, uh, whether it's Dvaita uh, or Vishishta Dvaita or Sankhya, etc. Uh, Advait Vedanta seems to have the maximum capacity uh, uh, explain, of explanatory power. It has the maximum explanatory power. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when I'm communicating it, I use one of its threads, as mm -hmm. I said, Sri Vidya, mm -hmm. uh, Kashmir Shaivism, because it's so, easier uh, to explain. If you, if I may interject, uh, Janji, so uh, I don't know this, but is Shri, are Sri Vidya and Kashmir Shaivism uh, offshoots or shall we say threads of, like you say, of uh, Ad, 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 right, Vedanta? Yes. Vedan. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so that's uh, um, uh, basically um, uh, there. There are uh, because then the question comes up. You see. Um, uh, if you go to pure Advait, and I don't want to go too deep into it, yeah. it, it can be confusing. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, whether everything is Atma, everything is Anatma, etc. Uh, and, and, and the practical aspects, because which we talked about uh, how practical things are, right? Whether it's uh, in the Bhagavad Gita or Lelita Sahasanam, very practical stuff, right? Uh, and, and not to make it too esoteric, but, uh, but this, this question allows us to see uh, 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 um, uh, what immense explanatory power uh, uh, this particular darshana, the way of looking at this. Okay, so so the the, the two birds that we are talking about uh, is basically uh, the sakshi bhava, mm -hmm. okay, the observer bird, right, and the ahamkara, 
the ahamkara is the actor bird actor bird right okay and the uh, ahamkara right uh, when we drop the veil of avidya okay the ahamkara forgets uh, that uh, the, uh, we have that ahamkara capacity mm. of saying aham aham right of cognizing cognizing and be, being aware of ourselves because of sakshi right that veil falls right we think we are the greatest we are the ones who are acting and we become the eater bird mm. right so so we are eating the experiences that are delivered to us by our sense functions so the, the actor bird is actually eating on a fruit right in the story the yeah yeah the, the, the fruit, bird is watching yeah. and the actor bird is enjoying the fruit they enjoying the fruit and this fruit is these all these external pulsations right which have been delivered to the actor bird by the sense functions mm. right okay correct so so so, so there, 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 there is this whole process uh, how does, how, yes uh, sorry to so how does this how does this connect to quantum physics okay so quantum physics also uh, has this so uh, uh, somewhere along the line uh, okay uh, when they started observing um, uh, um and they they thought New newton had it all right uh, with, with the laws of physics etc okay uh, uh, but, but um, uh, even the simplest things uh, uh, they came across this three body problem which they couldn't explain and they still can't explain and they had to find a way to explain it the three body mm. problem being uh you have the earth sun and moon mm -hmm. okay uh, and the orbits of the earth sun and moon uh, we, we can't really predict uh, given any um, any functions that that newton has or you know uh, you say it's something like gravity and, mm -hmm. and, right um, there there are so many uh, uh, moving parts it cannot be explained you mean okay. this, uh, the the earth moon and sun cannot be explained via newton's uh, laws uh, no, uh, yeah exactly the, 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 uh, the, there are so many wobbles around it it can't be explained hmm. okay uh, so that was the first starting point and you, you can't explain uh, uh, why um, the masses uh, uh, the, the orbits are of a certain way uh, why the cosmos moves in a certain way etc mm. <coughs> and, and they couldn't explain what the space and time was okay um, because they seem to move in space mm. right um, uh, and uh, are they really moving in space uh, and what what is this thing called time mm. um, and uh, so in their model where quantum physics has started mm. uh, is by saying uh, what the sense function uh, what we see as sense function whatever we observe is real hmm. matter is real okay so we start from this end hmm. right and, and say everything out there is transient transient they they say that is all real hmm. and they try to explain it how do they try to explain it through observation hmm. right in their model they don't have to bring in they, they are obliv oblivious of uh, the uh, sense functions they are oblivious of buddhi mm. right they, they take the mental models they build of the mathematics right mathematics is a language that mm. the buddhi produces mm. that's how vedanta teaches us the vedanta teaches us the whole process quantum mm. physics takes it all as real they can't make sense Uh, they people and that's one of the things that's happened we indians take mathematics as something really great mm. our ancestors didn't ganit is just one of the things okay mm. right uh, uh, um i mean there's a, there's a we, distinction we put physicists on pedestals all they're doing is uh, coming up with little bits of uh, a mathematical language put, put in certain forms okay and they try to explain the phenomena that the sense functions are delivering okay so they have a really uh, uh, yeah so like for example i think this uh, brings to mind or i mean i remember reading somewhere that in uh, according to us um, 
uh, all of the knowledge systems that there are are merely vigyanam you know whether it is ganit or whether it is astronomy but jnana is only the knowledge of the self only so jnana the word jnana cannot be applied to any other field of knowledge uh, where which are just merely disciplines and probably the term vigyan applies to them whereas the other or the technology thereof whereas jnana is only the the, the word jnana can only be applied to the knowledge of the self is what i read somewhere um yeah so so um um, um so, some people turn it around uh, uh, also so i don't want to go into that uh, whether it's uh, yeah so there is a differentiation uh, mm -hmm. of, of gradations of jnan shall we say mm -hmm. okay uh, uh, so para is also used for example para, para, right. right so right. so you will call someone a paridnyani mm -hmm. and paridnyana ashram comes from that right paridnyani one who knows right beyond and so beyond quote unquote beyond beyond what beyond mm. buddhi mm. right uh, we are beyond buddhi and buddhi is uh, uh, buddhi can only go uh, and be able to understand uh, what is delivered to it by the sense functions mm. Mm. okay so vedant forces us to think think through in this uh, uh, supply chain process shall we say mm. every step of the way you, you, uh, it does not allow you to say okay i'm going to take it if you if you don the hat of a Vedantin, you have to do this. You have to deconstruct everything in terms of this process. Okay, I'm not saying every one of us has to do it. When we sit on a meditation seat, this is what the contemplation is. This is what Shavanam Mananam is, 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 right? And so, yeah, so quantum physicists, any physicists, that, that, that's why they're continually confused. You, you go and look, uh, uh, there are controversies right now. So, you know, uh, maybe we should stop theorizing. Mm -hmm. uh, this can't be done, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 theoretical physics is at a dead end, and mm -hmm. so forth. Because what is theoretical physics? It, it, it's basically uh, mental models, and mental models are transient. Okay, uh, the mental models themselves are transient, and, and uh, they are describing some, uh, something. It, even more transient. The farther away you go from Sakshi, the more transient it is. So you're saying that uh, quantum physics is moving away from Sakshi. Is, is that what you're saying? Uh, the, the, the attempt being made mm -hmm. uh, is to generate mental models, mm -hmm. mathematical models, which is a language, mm -hmm. okay, a, a symbolic language to describe um, uh, a phenomena which mm -hmm. is transient. So right. both are transient. Okay, right. Uh, right. Uh, the phenomena is very transient. Even mm -hmm. the mathematical models are transient. Will keep changing. Okay, right. they will keep changing. Okay, uh, and so so when it comes to this fallibility, okay, mm -hmm. they make a big deal. Oh, Karl Popper taught us uh, about fallibility, uh, what science is, and it has to be fallible, etc. Mm -hmm. so from Vedant perspective, it was always fallible. What, what's the big deal? Mm -hmm. right? We knew it was fallible. Right. Uh, remember, Ma Faleshu Kadachana. We know we were in the probabilistic world. They did not. They right. rediscovered it. They rediscovered it, and they think they are the ones who have discovered it. Discovered also. it. Correct. Correct. I I have. I mean, this next question is kind of completely tangential to what we've talking, but kind of maybe in a way. I think everything is connected in a way. But I was yeah. always curious to know this, and I I thought I should ask you. Um, uh, so there was a practice of, uh, you know, of um, Brahmins, particularly in the in the uh, olden days, where they were prohibited from uh, traveling overseas. There was, mm -hmm. in fact, you know, it, there was kind of like, uh, you know, you were excommunicated from the community if you traveled overseas, and this was particularly applicable to Brahmins, the Brahmin community. Why is that? Is there a is is there a um, it, was it just a, a, a sort of a, a superstitious belief or was there something more grounded in that practice, something more meaningful? Okay, so so um, I, I think that's a great question. Um, I, I can think of giving very long answer to this. I, I would love to. Uh, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so uh, uh, for, first of all, um, it's not. Uh, 
yeah, so it, it's not that uh, the people from India didn't go out uh, mm -hmm. across the seas, etc. The, the fisher folk went out, traders went out. Uh, uh, we, we went all the way to Bali, uh, to Japan, China, etc. So the, um, that, that's all there, right? Uh, uh, now, Bra Brahmins moved too. Um, uh, you know, uh, but the, the way the Brahmins moved uh, was uh, to uh, think of Brahmins uh, as a guild. Um, uh, where, where, where they taught their uh, children um, uh, to do certain uh, work in a certain way, etc. Okay, so it's a guild. So they, they, they said, in fact, uh, uh, and you can see uh, how the Brahmins offered the services uh, to the next village and to the next village, etc. Okay, um, uh, so uh, all, all the way from the Gangetic Plain, okay, uh, we, we have history of, of Brahmins going all the way, at least to Cambodge. Right. Okay. Uh, village by village, uh, mm -hmm. they go east, and the way they did it was uh, 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 the uh, the male Brahmin could go uh, to the next village uh, uh, and uh, marry someone local that was allowed. Uh, mm -hmm. But Brahmin women uh, were married always to the west. That's one of the things. The same thing to the south also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so uh, you you can see uh, then when you look at the Smritis, uh, there are directions given, right? Uh, I didn't. Uh, so, I have no idea. Okay. So yeah. Brahmin women could only be married to someone to the west of where they were located. Yeah, to, to Brahmins. Well, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Brahmin men could go east, uh, offer their services, hmm. right? Uh, you can think of uh, how uh, uh, software people go to the west and right? they settle yeah. down there, etc. So, so uh, right. So as long as they gave the services as Brahmins, they were part of the community. They they would be taught, uh, mm -hmm. and their uh, panchangam would be shared with them because mm -hmm. uh, that was an intellectual property, right? So uh, so uh, so one way of looking at it uh, is that um, the Brahmins uh, during the British era, right, mm -hmm. um, uh, from um, established Brahmin families uh, were. Uh, offered um, uh, because they saw uh, the British saw what they were capable of, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, were offered positions in the British judiciary. Uh, they, they were sent to England for long periods of time uh, to uh, be uh, to become uh, jurists. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, they, they were basically leaving the profession. Ah. They were leaving the guild, right? So uh, the quote unquote excommunication, and I want to talk about that word excommunication. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, uh, um, is basically to say uh, when you do come back, you can't come back and start doing this because uh, you know uh, the the way we do the knowledge, uh, the way we apply. You have to do sandhya vandana three times a day. You have to observe um, uh, the the sun yeah. and the moon uh, and and uh, uh, help us develop the panchang for the community. Mm -hmm. Right, each one of them. The inputs were right. That's very important, uh, uh, and 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 their acts in the community, okay, uh, to, to to officiate at, at at births and marriages and deaths, etc. Right. Uh, in this process, uh, they they were like guide rails. They were like acharyas, mm -hmm. right, uh, 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 of this whole human cycle. Correct. Right uh, to stabilize this whole human cycle. Okay, so so if you're going to leave us for a long time, go do your thing. Then don't come back. <laughs> you, you can't. You are not part of uh, this community because you are not right. So it, it's it's like uh, uh, if someone uh, is in a corporation for fifteen years and then says, "Oh, I'm I'm going to take a couple of years off um, uh, and uh, do something else." Okay, completely else, uh, completely different. I'm going to go to a foreign country, China, and do something else. For a couple of years, and they say, "Well, farewell, good. Mm. You, can, you can go, right? But I, I don't think you'll have a place when you come back." So, okay. So, so the Very excommunication. So, uh, sorry, just just one little question here was to was the excommunication more to do with the uh, the the termination of their services, the fact that they were doing something else. And not, uh, you know, following the rituals and all of that practices of being a Brahmin, 
or was it the fact that they were traveling overseas so was the geographical location moving a problem or the fact that they were taking on other kinds of tasks um so uh, so um so the example i've given okay um uh, of people going all the way to cambodge okay mm -hmm. uh, or, or wherever okay um it, it's uh, i i don't think the, uh, um so so uh, clearly uh, people in bali learned it people in bali uh, had havan kunds so where, where did that come from brahmins had gone there really? right clearly so, yes. so that so so uh, I, I think there is enough evidence that was not it if it, it was you you can go as long as you do what you are meant to what do. this community does what this gate does mm -hmm. right then we'll support you and you support us mm -hmm. if you're going away anyways so then you're not part of this that's all that is right right interesting so now, this yeah can, can i can i focus on this word excommunication for Please. a little bit and and yes. then i want to come back with other things yeah okay <clears throat> because this is where i want to introduce uh, this other aspect uh, but excommunication is a christian theological word okay <laughs> and, and we we talk of uh, decolonization uh, but we are so colonized uh, we don't even know uh, we are using these words these, these words were used uh, specifically to uh, demean and denigrate mm. indian cultural life right and, and compare uh, these missionaries came and discovered uh, christian uh, uh, hinduism as a religion correct correct right and, and and then as a false religion and they say oh they do these things etc mm. right and we sucked it up and we started reforming it regurgitating it <laughs> right? and reforming it yeah right? yes of so course. this this word excommunication so uh, the, the root is commune right uh, so what does commune mean you commune in a church right mm -hmm. uh, you have the right to commune in a church right um uh, which what does that mean uh, that means uh, you partake uh, of the uh, body and blood of christ mm. you are given wine as the blood uh, and, and the, a biscuit yeah, so, biscuit, yeah. whatever uh, wafer wafer, wafer, uh, wafer uh, yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, as the body of christ right body. and before that before the commune uh, communing right um, uh, you are you have uh, they all take an oath right that they will be loyal to one and only one god right so uh, so excommunication means you are not being loyal to that god mm. hence we will not allow you to commune mm. yeah now veda tells us that we can interact with god connect with quote and quote the divine shall we the subtle divine forget the god god is a theological word too christian mm -hmm. theological word. Uh, the subtle divine in so many different ways different ways right there's no restriction there so there, where is this thing about excommunication mm -hmm. because uh, right uh, in christianity uh, you you can commune with god only through his church only through the yes uh, you can't i mean of course uh, yes you cannot independently have a have a, a you know, relationship with god <laughs> right right so, so yeah so so that's where the word excommunication came from mm -hmm. and we use it right so we have to be careful that in our decolonization process that the fact that we ask that question itself where did that question come from Mm. Right. I'm. I'm glad you. Uh, I'm. I'm going to. I'm going to remove that word from my lexicon. <laughs> Be very careful about the usage of. That. I mean that. That's the process of decolonization. Is to. Right. Right. So. Every, so. Every day you learn that some of these words that you use very casually are actually very laden with, uh, you know, uh, different meanings. Yeah. So. So. Uh, yeah. So idol worship, etc. Those are. We have worship itself means going down on your knees. So we don't go down on our knees, right? We don't kneel, etc. So, so idol worship, right? Murti puja is a whole different thing, and the, the pran pratishtha that comes with it, and so forth. So uh, that that's um, so that's the excommunication part. Having said that, having said that, I, I would like to take this opportunity though uh, to, um, if I may, uh, uh, to raise another question. 
about what what were our ancestors doing? Um, um, I, I don't know where you're moving after this question, so uh, whether I should introduce it here or not. <clears throat> uh, 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 and and the, uh, the question I have, I would like to ask my ancestors, let's say 400 mm. or 700 years ago, mm. right, uh, is um, around the time when we said, oh, the Brahmin shouldn't go out, etc., etc., right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Vasco da Gama came to uh, India in 1498. Okay. Um, um, at that time, uh, Vijayanagar, uh, the empire, was at its peak. Okay. Uh, I think Vijayanagar was a little later, I think, Janji. No, no. Uh, it's uh, exactly at that time and, and into, the, uh, into the 1500s. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, in fact, uh, around that time, 1530. Uh, um, Krishna Devaraya was around 15 something, I think. Right, right. So, uh, 1498, it was. Uh, Achut, already Achuta, Achuta Raya, maybe his uh, grandfather or father, not sure. Right. Probably. Um, so, 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 anyway, if you, if you look at the Vijayanagar, it's about 1350 uh, or so, uh, and it goes on to early 1600s. So, right. the entire period. Okay, of 200 years. So 1498, uh, and all the uh, uh, local kings uh, were paying tributes to uh, the Vijayanagara uh, kingdom or uh, empire, okay? Uh, and that this included uh, the Zamarin uh, of Kochi and so forth, that area, where, 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 um, where um, uh, Vasco da Gama landed. Landed. Right? Um, uh, and within five years, so he, he landed, right? Um, uh, he brought uh, the reason he came was uh, for trading, right? Uh, because they, they were f uh, fighting uh, the Islamic wars, mm -hmm. wars with Islam, right? Um, and Vasco da Gama was uh, a particularly notorious, violent uh, pirate and, and were very successful at leading the crusades in North Africa. So he was chosen um, mm -hmm. uh, to go out to India. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and he comes there. Uh, and uh, he leaves uh, five Portuguese traders, um, mm. and, and along with him uh, on his heels come missionaries. Mm, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so all this contingent comes. There come spies. Okay. Um, uh, and uh, um, and what do you see then? Um, within uh, less than a hundred years, right? By 1582, uh, these Jesuits who are the core intellectual core of the Holy Roman Empire. Empire. They have come to uh, Kerala. They have learned Vedang Jyotish. They go back. Okay. Um, they, they learn the pirate knowledge also. So yeah, they, absolutely. But they, they innovate. They change things, right? And they leverage out of it. <clears throat> By 1582, they have a Gregorian calendar and mm. you know, they are able to manage life differently. Mm. So my question is this, okay? And this happened, this whole thrust happened at a time when Europe was uh, uh, going through uh, internal strife, okay? Uh, Islam was coming against it and, and quite successfully. They were going on crusades, et cetera, right? Um, uh, and, and yet they chartered Vasco da Gama and later, and in 1600, by the way, uh, by 1600, um, um, East India Company was formed. Yes. In that, in that hundred years, in that hundred years. So my question is, um, while they sent uh, explorers, traders, missionaries, spies, okay, what did our ruling class do? They I, were there. I, I'm, I'm also wondering what were we doing. Right? So, uh, so did we send, um, our missions there? Did we send? I don't know. I mean, I'm open to doing research about it. Mm. You so if they did send, right? Uh, if if they did, did send emissaries, if we did send traders, uh, what happened to those missions? Right? How successful were we? We could have done the other thing, right? We one of the reasons uh, less number of Indians went out, right? And and everyone made a beeline. It was the same. <laughs> We're doing well, right? Just, just see America. Everyone wants to make a beeline to America, right? Few Americans go out, 
Absolutely. Very small percentage of Americans even have uh, an international have passport. Out, out of their towns or their, you know, little... Within 50 miles, they, yeah. they are born and... Yeah, Absolutely. 50, right? So, so we were doing very well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, right, but, but uh, the, the American empire uh, always has its eyes all over the place. Mm -hmm. Right? The ruling class makes sure... That they have their... Uh, uh, you know, hawk-like well, uh, presence everywhere. <laughs> right, uh, their intelligence agencies, uh, their military presence, mm -hmm. their, their diplomatic missions everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. What were we doing? And why didn't we not do that? That is the question to ask. Mm -hmm. That's a very, very, very valid question. Huh? Uh, and and uh, what trap did we fall into? Mm -hmm. right? So my, my hypothesis is we fell into the trap uh, of local optima. We were so happy. Mm, complacent, I guess. Oh, yeah, <laughs> the, the, the complacence. Which, which is a which is a problem that ails us even today. <laughs> um, Jenji, I think we'll wrap up with this one last question um, because we're running out of time. Uh, my final question, and I think it's very critical, uh, especially in today's uh, the world that we are in today as Hindus. For the future of, of for building the or securing the future of Hinduism and Sanatan Dharma, how important are the Devasthanas? Because our Devasthanas, our temples, as you know, and we're fighting a battle uh, today. Uh, thankfully, we've finally risen and we're waking up to the fact that our temples are actually caught in the vortex of, you know, um, uh, government control and uh, and. Uh, you know, a different kind of a mafia, actually. So, um, uh, especially in places like Andhra and Karnataka, I mean, it's the, the condition is uh, pathetic. So, how, what role do the Devasthanas play? In fact, do they have a role in the future of securing or in 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 securing the future of, of the Hindus? So, uh, this, this this is the perspective I see. So, the, uh, the uh, Devasthanas are portals. So they are, they, are, they are the portals um, um, uh, where we uh, through which we connect uh, with the subtle. Um, at, at the at the material level, most of us can uh, easy, more easily connect uh, through the devasthanas, mm -hmm. and, and um, um, so so that that's a very critical aspect uh, for our culture to have devasthanas. Um, and uh, uh, um, what kind of devasthanas? I, I, I would like to give. Uh, a visualization, an example, okay, mm -hmm. uh, and, and in that context of of deshikal uh, paristhiti, uh, it's very important to uh, bring bring that deshikal paristhiti uh, mm -hmm. uh, to bear as we speak, okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, uh, so I I see Bharatiya uh, is uh, as uh, anyone uh, who connects with the light bha, okay. So if if you take that. Right, that's a Bharatiya. Anywhere there are Bharatiya communities, right? Uh, 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 we can and should and will for the Renaissance for over the next 500 years. So we are talking about 500 years, right? Uh, 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 of Devasthanas, right? Uh, uh, Devasthanas, wherever there are Bharatiyas, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, which will be a braid, a powerful, lustrous braid of three margas. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, of the uh, Shakti Marga, Shaiva Marga, and uh, Vaishnava Marga, which uh, particular uh, deity, the uh, Divya Shakti, um, is uh, is invoked in a particular Devasthana will leave to the um, uh, a local Bharatiya community. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so that there will be physical nodes everywhere, everywhere on the globe or Mars or Moon doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Okay. To your question, how will the, we be, make that possible? We'll mm -hmm. think big. We'll take 500 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and and uh, we will do it. The today's Deshkal Paristhiti will accept and agree. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, uh, that that we are on digital platforms. Um, uh, the hierarchy is flattening out, and we'll take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. Right. Every devasthana, every community will be uh, a teaching devasthana. Uh, they will be all volunteers. There will not be um, uh, any professional purohits. We will learn for ourselves, right? 
will take turns uh, mm-hmm. of, of taking care of the devtas in yeah. that devasthana mm-hmm. every day, mm-hmm. right? <clears throat> and and uh, um, this has been beautifully shown. Uh, it's an example that has been presented um, by um, uh, uh, people who had to come out uh, in uh, very uh, stressed circumstances from Sri Lanka. Um, mm-hmm. And they've done exactly this. Um, uh, you know, they, they, they put together uh, Devasthanas uh, where they run it themselves, uh, teaching uh, teaching themselves. And, right? Um, uh, the beautiful Raj, Rajeshwari. Community you know, you know. stakeholdership of, of the... That's it. So, so what happens then, uh, it, it, it's uh, uh, the concept then becomes an open sourcing concept. Mm-hmm. Okay, just like software is built in an open sourcing way, so you 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 have uh, we have a network of physical nodes of devasthanas mm-hmm. all across the globe, Mars, Moon, literally. Think of it, five hundred years Renaissance. Mm-hmm. If you want Renaissance, we want Renaissance. Five hundred years, mm-hmm. right? And, and and then once you visualize it that way, mm-hmm. right? And we flatten out the hierarchy. Right? We we come out with. Uh, Saying okay, these, these will be the physical nodes, and they'll all be uh, connected uh, on a digital platform, mm. right? Um, and and uh, each devasthana will be a camp. Some of them will be major nodes, mm. a, a, and mm. others will be a smaller nodes. Each will be a campus uh, a, a where uh, around the devasthana uh, we uh, we will learn um, mm. uh, the yogas, the bhakti yoga, uh, the karma yoga, the jnana yoga. Uh, the dharanas, the Sri Vidya dharanas. Um, Centers right? for learning. That's right. Okay. So, so uh, that's where we'll come uh, for rejuvenation, for recharging ourselves before we go out into the material world, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and, and we are not taking away agency. Everyone has to do their own thing, right? But 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 the, 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 this will be uh, the knowledge node, mm-hmm. right? Which will carry through uh, our uh, basic principles of the Veda. Sarve bhavantu sukhina, mm-hmm. right? We want everyone to be happy, right? Mm-hmm. We are going to do this by being in harmony with Rita, mm-hmm. and we are going to do this while minimizing harm. Correct. Right? Paramo dharma. That's right? Ahimsa paramo dharma. So, that, that's, so, the, so uh, 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 that's what we have to visualize, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, uh, and this this deshakal paristhiti, we have to say this is where we are. Mm. It's not going to be incremental, it, right? If you open source it everywhere, anyone, everywhere, mm. Mm. put together That's... your physical nodes and, and connect through the. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much, Janji. I think uh, this was a very very enlightening talk in so many different ways, and I particularly appreciated the painstaking manner in which you explained everything threadbare. And I'm sure our viewers would find themselves themselves enriched by this talk. So thank you for your valuable time. We've uh, actually, this is the first time that I've spoken or, or have spent like two hours talking to a, a guest. We've spent, yeah, we've been talking for two hours, but it was more like a discussion than uh, anything else. So uh, thank you so much for your valuable time. And uh, I hope to uh, see you again on our show, perhaps sometime in the uh, in the future. Uh, yeah, I, I, I must say, I really enjoyed. I I, I enjoyed our interaction. I Time just too. took away. Okay. I'm glad. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jenji. Um, okay. To our viewers, um, I hope you enjoyed our talk. Uh, please do subscribe, share, and like, and do share widely with your friends and family, and come back very soon for yet another episode of the Festival of Bharat with yet another guest. Thank you so much. Namaskar. Om Sri Matre Nama. Namaste. We hope you enjoyed this Chitti Media content. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad. Namaskar. <laughs>